I think people confuse what they see from people who are well-versed. I'll say well-versed or yes. polished or practiced or they've been doing it for a year or two. And you get to watch them on Zoom and they're talking to clients and it seems so simple. It's like Roger makes this look so simple. And it is simple. But the, the part that's not easy is learning communication skills. Yes. It's actually communicating so you can move people. So people can take action on something that's actually going to improve their life. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. You're a brand new life insurance agent. You've got brand new life insurance agents starting with you. And you're wondering how to have success. And you've got about a 90 to 90 day, maybe a six month window to ramp up and have success. Or else you become one of those statistics of the 92% that fail out. So what does it take for you to have success in the first 90 days? Zach and I are in studio today. We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be sharing some of our stories about how we started and what we did to have success and breakthrough in that first 30, 60, 90 days, because it's probably the most crucial 90 days of your career in the business. So we're going to dial in on that today. Zach, me and you back in studio again, man. I know. It's, 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 it's been a while. It's good, been a while. Good to be here. A lot of, a lot of traveling. We, it's hard to get us all together again. Uh, yeah, Chris is getting a new wheel on his car, meaning he, he got a knee replacement. <laughs> that's right. That's but, right. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Man, we're talking about the first 90 days as a life insurance agent. Uh, I remember when you went out with me and I took uh, you yeah. out to a mud. Uh, it was wet. I remember being wet and we were on these muddy roads and we were trying to find these houses from mm. direct mail leads. And it would not be what I would call an ideal first look at the business and most people would have ran for the hills and, and ran away. Yeah. First 90 uh, minutes. You did not. Uh, <laughs> you stuck in there. Uh, you saw something and uh, you decided that you were going to try to make this work. And then once we got you out, you had a pretty good first week on your own after mm -hmm. you got rolling. Uh, yep. Let's talk about the first 90 days, man. What are life insurance agents going through in the first 90 days? And, uh, and why do 92% of them quit? To be honest, the first 90 days is an eternity. It's a lifetime. It's a career. And that's what people um, associate everything on. They don't even hear the word 90 days because they don't believe they're going to make it 90 days. They're trying to make it. Generally, agents have enough set aside or enough comfortability in their life or enough um, cohesion with their spouse or family for like two weeks. And if you ain't, if you're not seeing some sort of results or some sort of progress or some sort of spark or belief or mm -hmm. confidence, then it's nearly impossible to survive. Um, so that first 90 day period is absolutely crucial with inside your first year, but really you have to be accountable to yourself and hit certain benchmarks and each week in that first 90 days so you can make it past your first 30. Yeah. I mean, when I think about one of the first things that I would say that you need to be aware of, it's going to be a challenging start. Uh, new agents are going to have a very challenging start. And I want to talk about, you know, when people look at the business and when I looked at the business and I saw what we were doing, it almost seemed too simple. It's like, we're just talking to people, helping them get coverage that they requested mm -hmm. either on direct mail or online. We're sitting with families and asking them some questions and helping them apply for coverage. It, it didn't seem that hard, right? right? It's so simple was this idea. And so I think a lot of people look at the business and they see other people making money, especially now with the proliferation of social media and everything that you see on social media, like this is an unbelievable business opportunity. Yes. They see simple, but they confuse simple with easy. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I, I think the industry doesn't do a very good job at bridging that gap. Because typically, if you're fortunate enough to be able to ride with somebody, or nowadays, which wasn't the case back, you know, 10 years ago, um, you can watch people on YouTube, you can document their, you could watch their story, their journey of success. I mean, there's TV shows now, there's, there's so many other things for you to uh, spark interest, to give the belief to say, hey, this industry is simple, I think I can do it, I think I can move into it. 
But the person you're riding with has confidence. They have belief. They have experience. Mm-hmm. They've had success. They are at a, a, a different level in every aspect of the business. Now, you're right. The actual process of what we're doing is extremely simple. And that's almost – it almost uh, – it, it's – I don't know the word I'm looking for. It works against you. It does. It works against you for that simple reason. Mm -hmm. Um, But you don't know the little bit of nuance and skill set you had to develop to make it look so simple. You never go, hey, I'll... You know, hey, I, I want to go check out this new business of life insurance. I've never seen it done, but hey, I got this guy I'm gonna I'm gonna ride with, and he's gonna kind of show me the ropes, and I'm gonna see if this industry is a fit for me. I'm not gonna ride with the worst person in the world because then you're not even in here the first mm-hmm. two days. Correct. So it, it's very it's very uh, it's very alarming to um, understand. Yes, it is simple, but it's not easy to get started. Mm-hmm. The, the principles of selling, the concept, understanding why the client's needed and how to move them to a position to do good and become difference makers, it's simple, it's rewarding, its industry is unbelievable, mm-hmm. but it's not easy. Yeah. I think people confuse what they see from people who are well-versed, I'll say well-versed, or yes. polished, or practiced, or... They've been doing it for a year or two and you get to watch them on Zoom and they're talking to clients and it seems so simple. It's like, it's like, it's almost like when we do coaching calls, Mm -hmm. people put in comments all the time, Roger makes this look so simple and it is simple, but the, the part that's not easy is learning communication skills. Yes. Right. So you're going from somebody who typically is performing a task to make their money to learning how to become a high level communicator to make money. Yep. And the high level communicator is not just someone who's regurgitating information. It's actually communicating so you can move people. So people can take action on something that's actually going to improve their life. And that part, that nuance of learning to become a communicator, Mm -hmm. that's the part that needs practice. It needs skill. It needs time. It needs nurturing. It needs attention. But when you see it done by someone who's well-versed and skilled, it seems like they make it look so Simple. Oh, hundred percent. It's yeah. like in your mind, Roger, like when you're doing that and, and you know how to communicate a certain way, but in your mind, there's, there's a belief, there's a confidence, but there's also an understanding of the client of the situation. There's understanding where they are in this mm-hmm. mentally yeah. and emotionally. So you know what to say next, what adjustments, how to reel them back in, how to make it more emotional, how to address some objections or concerns that they're not actually verbally telling you Mm -hmm. and you're able to control the conversation to answer questions that they're not even asking. But if I'm sitting with you as a new agent, it's just, you're just saying, oh, I can tell you love them, don't you? Oh, this is important to you, right? Let's get you taken care of, write the app, boom, commission, right? (laughs) So there's so much (laughs) intentionality and nuance that Mm -hmm. goes into it. And that's the stuff we're talking about. That's that's what a new agent needs to understand, um, and they need help, coaching, mentorship mm-hmm. to master that side of this business. So challenging start is one of the first things that you need to know in the first 90 days. Zach, let's, let's talk about your first 90 days. All right. I, I kind of set up on the front end of this what that first week looked like of you just riding with me. Mm-hmm. And then when I saw you do your very first presentation on that porch, yep. I remember exactly where that lady was sitting. We didn't even get inside of her trailer home. We sat on the, out on the porch yep. and it was not good. Yep. And then, you know, within, within 24 hours, you were closing sales. Yes. Tell me about your process when you got started and what you were committed to, to, to master that first 90 days. Yeah. Um, Cause it was challenging for you. I say the biggest thing that helped me was, was the forcing function that I had responsibility and commitments I had to financially pay for. Mm -hmm. Um, I was leaving the three jobs, um, in order. So I had guaranteed income, not a ton. That's why I was looking at an opportunity. Um, but that there wasn't an option to fail. There was no option. So I, I didn't know what I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember being with you on that first, uh, the first ride along, which was the previous week. Mm -hmm. And I think I just spent, uh, an afternoon with you. You're like, we're going to get started. We're getting early. You know, we woke up at like, uh, I don't know, six 30 and you're like, just practice your presentation. We ended up not leaving till like two, Yeah. (laughs) but I wrote out every single word of the presentation Mm -hmm. 
I, I rehearsed it. I even added jokes in there. I, I like, how can I make myself feel more like a human? Yeah. I know the information, but I don't sound rehearsed. Um, sitting on the front, fast forward the next, uh, week. Uh, next week, um, I sat on a front porch and was shaking like a Mack truck moving through it. Um, just sit, <laughs> I mean, my hands were going and, and she was the nicest lady sitting right yeah. on her little metal steps outside of her trailer. Um, and I realized I need to get so much better. Um, it's, it's more than knowing the content. It's more than knowing the products. It's knowing how to communicate the products to the people that need them, Mm -hmm. um, and being an advocate for them. So those first 90 days were stressful. Mm -hmm. And and I wouldn't even say it's 90 days. I had to have some belief and confidence because I couldn't come home and say, look, I didn't make anything. Look, I didn't do good. Hey, I didn't progress. There had to be a wins. wins. There had to be wins. Um, and I remember late that night, really late. Uh, I still remember the lady's name and her son's name. We started on the, the front porch and the, ended up inside the house. Yeah, the McHoustons, mm-hmm. right? And he was, we, we connected. Uh, I remember the whole thing changed when I started asking and talking, trying to find ways to connect with these people because it was different. I remember mentioning wrestling and her, her son that was, uh, had some special needs. He lit up and, and, and it, it took off from there, but um, the biggest thing in the first 90 days is for me was it wasn't results based. It was activity and wins based. And mm-hmm. the wins were not related to the results. And what I mean by that, uh, my first week getting out to the field, I had old leads, second chance leads, B leads, whatever you want to call them. None of them were fresh leads. Um, and I had, I think only had 13 there were not very many. It, it was going to be just a short little kind of trial week to get my feet wet. I ended up writing 5,300 um, right off Boom. that. Boom. It was, it was great, <laughs> but man, I was scared to death writing that 5,300. I was like desperate. Like I ain't had water in months, man. And, and it wasn't the commission breast side. It was, I knew I wasn't going to be as good as everybody else mm-hmm. in week one, week two, week three, but I knew I could outwork everybody else. I was going to knock on more than these 13 leads doors. I was going to do as best as I can in there. When I was in that home, I was going to have that sit like it was the last sit of my life. I was going to park my car. I was going to try to have the best connection. Mm -hmm. And they were all rough. I'm telling you, they were all rough. They were not polished. They were not good. Um, But I had that same mindset throughout that 90 days. And in each week, in you may say my result was good, but based upon the activity and effort that I put in, it was not good. I should have wrote 15, 20,000 because of the effort and the number of people I talked to. But that, that was the biggest thing for me is fighting through it, knowing Mm -hmm. it's going to be a struggle and where you, where you can make your, you know, I, I think the thing that I noticed about you, and this was the same for me as well, is I focused on learning this craft that was where my focus went. Like, I'm like, I, I'm, I know I'm not going to yes. be a, a success. I, I might've had some success in previous things and I'm coming in here and you got to look back at something to pull some confidence in your life forward. Right. To be able to even start oh, yeah. this. And, but I focused on the learning and um, getting good at a few things. And we talk about it today. We talk about, you know, the three P's, right. Getting good at understanding your people, understanding your products and understanding your process. Yep. And that's really where I started to focus on those three P's, the, the people, the products, and the process. And I tried to keep the product simple, two or three products, and I tried to keep my process simple. I knew exactly what I had to have. And that's where that five fundamentals or that five-part framework that yes. comes out in our sales process today, um, I focused on that. I saw you do the same thing. And so what I just took away from you is that you focused on learning and getting better every day, and you focused on the activity, the work. You did not focus on the results, but those first two yes. led to results where you didn't have your attention. You had it on the learning and the work to improve, which actually led to the results. A lot of new people come in, they're only looking at the results. 100%. And when they don't have a sale by the end of week one, they're mentally and emotionally, you know, uh, abandoned, a vacant. They're like, they're, they're, they're in an abyss. They're yeah. like ready to quit. You, you can't measure the results on the sales production, you measure the results on the activity and dedication to the learning improvement. 
And so when you said I focused on the little wins, what were those little things that you were trying to, that you looked for that was, hey, this is a win? Um, number one was activity. How many people can I get in front of? How many people can I see? Um, the other one was out of how many people, I, how many people was I, was I able to successfully get into the home? Um, how many sits was I able to have? How many was I able to actually convert how far I got inside of the cells? Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest, most helpful one is following the end of my day, how many people can I talk to that had that worked that day mm -hmm. that I could learn from? How many questions could I ask them? From other producers. Yes, because it wasn't just about the four or five families I sat with because that's how we learn, right? But if I'm sitting with or meeting up or I'm calling, because um, there's people in this industry, just communities, you have to use the community. If I heard and asked you, Roger, about every one of your four or five sits you had that day, now I just got 10 sits worth of experience in one day, mm -hmm. except I would do that with four or five people. Mm -hmm. So I'm listening and asking detailed questions. Now, what'd you say then? And what'd they say back to you? What was your objection? How'd you handle that? What did it end up being? Why'd it go to that policy? Um, why was it that amount? You know, how did you get to, mm -hmm. you know, that extra coverage? Yeah. And I would literally... You know, I wasn't going to retain all that information, but each day my experience was if I sat with 20 or 30 people, even though I didn't. And that was, that was a win to me. Um, that's, uh, that's cool. Uh, so let's go into this next one. Another th item that we listed down here is, you know, your first 90 days, some of the things that you're going to go through is the second one. And it leads into that uh, because we isolated some things. The second one that a new agent is going to go through is information overload. Oh yes. You're going to be totally overwhelmed with how much content there can be consumed and how many niches there are and how many types of products there are and how many carriers there are. And then the types of products that those carriers have and what's the difference between a mutual of Omaha living mm -hmm. promise and a, you know, a prosperity product or, you know, one versus the other. And so there's, there's all these, uh, yeah. you could, you could totally get information overload and you feel like you're drowning because you're trying to focus on everything at once. I might say an unpopular opinion, Roger, but, um, there's so many agents that I talk to so many people that come on our coaching calls and it's, it's, it's a vast majority of them have the same issue if they're new and they're struggling. It's, they have paralysis by analysis they want to learn all 10 carriers. They want to learn how to do all e-apps with all 10 carriers. They want to know the ins and outs of how's it, how's it works, their commissions, their contracts. They want to know the presentation mastered and, and rehearsed a hundred times ever before they hit the field. And, mm -hmm. and I would say you can't, the biggest way to learn in my opinion, and I, this is just a strong opinion on me, is you have to be doing it. There's so much you can learn. And you said something earlier. It's very important. You said, I'm, I keep it simple with two to three carriers, right? Mm -hmm. It's easy to read through a, a health set of health questions for two to three carriers. That's it. It's very simple. Um, but don't study, don't spend all your time studying your products before you go to the field. Like don't study unless you have activity to go with it. And what I mean by that is you have to be doing both simultaneously. You have to be going to the field. You have to experience what it feels like to get turned away at the door. You got to experience what it feels like for somebody to hang up on you in the first five seconds of the call. You have to experience what it's like to fill out an app and call a manager for help or ask questions. Like mm -hmm. there's things you can do, but you can't replace that experience. The one thing when we're talking about this podcast of being our first 90 days, mm -hmm. It's time-based and you're, you're not guaranteed to last 90 days. 92% fell before the 90 days. Mm -hmm. I would say of that 92%, probably another 92 fell in the first two weeks of that 90 day period. And I think it's because, um, that time is ticking and the longer that time goes, your safety net of funds goes down, the pressure goes up. It's harder to develop belief and confidence all mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. And you're just sitting there reading applications and products. Um, and that becomes very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. I, um, I just recently watched a great movie over the holiday break, Gran Turismo. I don't know if you guys seen that. Have you seen it? Is that Clint Eastwood? Uh, no, it's about That's Gran, uh, Torino. Gran Torino. Carino. Gran Turismo is based off of the simulation, the driving simulation for GT uh, yeah, F1 yes. Formula 
uh, racers. And uh, there was a kid uh, that um, a Nissan decided that they wanted to start a program to take these people who were super high achievers in this Gran Turismo simulation game from this guy who had developed this game that was so realistic that he believed he could take sim drivers and make them real drivers. And it would be like learning this industry uh, without having the practice is like reading the manuals on how to do racing, mm -hmm. right? The, the thing that I, I really loved about the movie is when they actually took the idea to market and they were trying to find an engineer to support this concept so they wouldn't have a bunch of people dying, you know, getting in a real race car doing 300 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they're on a track, right? If you, if you tag out on the track, you just hit restart and you go again. Well, in real life, it's, it's all over. Um, and they, he was going through and said, every one of you is going to fail. Every one of you is going to fail. And this one kid said, I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours on this car. I know exactly how it's going to perform in the turns. And he was right. The engineer didn't know if it, it could translate. So he was, he thought these kids were just studying like manuals, like they didn't have driving experience. And so they were now what, what happened once they went from the Sims to the real car is they were now feeling forces that they never felt before. But it was really the only difference is like they were feeling G forces going into a turn or how it felt like to draft somebody and slingshot around them coming into a turn or, or you know, and that sort of thing. That was the, the, the they couldn't mm -hmm. feel that in Sims, but they could feel it in real racing. But these kids were putting in the hours. They were putting in the hours behind, behind, the, behind the wheel and it translated into success and they actually developed a, a winning team, you know, right. Nissan did. Um, if you don't have something to actually apply what you're learning, the knowledge is lost. Yep. It'd be like you learning how to fly a plane and never going up with a co-pilot to actually take a wheel and feel like what is going to happen. Like you, you study and you go up in the plane, you try stuff. It doesn't work. You, you, you like you've got to be implementing. So doing while you're learning is the, is really the only and way. That's to the whole concept is, um, and I, I said this before on one of our coaching calls, it's a sport analogy is how come every coach isn't a hall of famer? Isn't? Yeah. Yeah. A, a, as a player, right? Mm -hmm. They may know the game better, but it's different when you know how to cut, when you know how to feel, when you have defensive pressure, when like it, you cannot emulate the feeling and the experience you gain from being in the fight, in the hunt, in the game. Uh, so I highly recommend don't get caught up in uh, paralysis by analysis. Mm -hmm. Learn enough, but learn along the way. I would say that that leads us into this third piece that I would think that you're going to face as a 90 day in your first 90 <laughs> days as a life agent. And that's really, and, and we've both talked about it and that's dialing down on a niche. Oh yeah. I would say you have to find a niche because of the social media and so many people posting content about successes in different verticals in life sales, people are torn. I've seen people trying to actually achieve at one while they're training a completely different set of life, uh, life products and niches while they're trying to master this one over here. It's like, it's like those guys trying to, you know, trying to drive this type of car, but they're actually racing in a completely different car or they're trying to do it, learn how to race a boat at the same time. Like it's, it's way too much going on. You have to dial in and find a niche. You yeah. focused on final expense. Mm -hmm. I focused on final expense. It's where we started. Tell me why that worked for you. Well, I think for one, I th there was less uh, social media. There was less options. I'm not saying there's less options. There was less marketed options in our face. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a little easier for us to do that. Um, and it was proven and it was duplicatable and it was simple and you can master it and then add on from there. Um, like you said, it's the same concept of there being serial entrepreneurs. And I think the, um, the disalignment all comes from, we all come into this industry for the same ra reasons, the same vision, the same goals, um, or end results that we want to see for ourselves. But there's a disconnect between how do we get there and what it takes to get there. Um, I like, I think a lot of agents and producers now are influenced because you don't see people posting YouTube videos or reels or lives of, Hey, I'm not that good of an agent. Hey, I struggled again this week. Hey, you know, this mm -hmm. doesn't happen. Um, in fact, a lot of it is overinflated results, overinflated numbers, overinflated success or the, and that's just social media in general, right? I mean, so many people 
they talk about the Instagram life versus reality. Mm -hmm. Um, People start chasing that and then they look at verticals of insurance like scratch off cards. They scratch them off and if you're not an instant winner, then they go try this vertical and then they try that vertical. Well, I'm going to sell it this way at home. I'm going to sell it on top of a car. I'm going to sell it. (laughs) Adam, that's an instant scratch off. I'm going to sell it on YouTube. I'm going to sell this one on, (laughs) you know, and it just keeps switching and you never get traction. You Mm -hmm. feel like you're always spinning your wheels um, and that can be very, very distracting, disheartening. Um, you're missing that entire belief and confidence system that not only can I find success and provide for my family, but I can teach somebody else how to fish. I can show them how to feed their own family mm-hmm. by following the same system. And I would say even like if we identified a few areas of life sales right now, senior market, final expense. Inside of that, there's face-to-face, mm-hmm. face-to-face sales. You're calling and scheduling appointments or you're door knocking from leads. Right. Uh, and then there's now the proliferation, uh, high demand and opportunity really is telesales, uh, yep. selling it through telesales. And that's really selling life insurance to individuals that are 50 to 85, you know, and you're using one of those methods. But even within those two methods, sometimes people are flip-flopping back and forth even within face-to-face, an appointment setting or door knocking, and they go, well, I'm going to try telesales next week, and I'm gonna, and then I'm going to flip-flop back to door-to-door. And they get themselves even confused in that because they don't stay in that lane long enough. Outside of uh, final expense, there's other strategies like uh, tax-free income strategies with, you know, IULs, uh, LERPs, life insurance, retirement plans, or the bank on yourself concepts now with cash value whole life, like debt, debt-free debt life, That's that sort of concept. And then there's Another niche for mortgage protection, Mm -hmm. you know, for people who refinance their home with mortgage protection generated leads for, you know, um, actually living benefits included in addition to the the death benefit for for younger families and that sort of thing. So I've identified four markets there. But then then we should offer Medicare because we do final expense and it's near the same client. Then we should do Medicare supplements because the mortgage protection market is very similar to that. And then if we're doing those, we should probably do Medicare seminars or retirement seminars because then there's annuity opportunities and, and then retirement we, and annuities. Yeah. And then know. and now we can start talking to businesses and local communities about doing insurance for businesses. It's it becomes very overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And the problem is, yes, we all want to get to that level. Um, yes, it would be awesome to master that and build an agency that provides all those services. Real, realistically, your third week in the business, you can't confidently offer all those services and know the ins and outs of them. Or expect to know, know any of them, really, to master any one of them. Right. It just causes major confusion. Our advice to you guys in your first 90 days is to find a niche, master it, learn the nuances, become as best as you can, um, and then you can start spreading or sharing that skill set with your community around you, our agents or friends or family um, that wants to come join you and your agency and really help you grow. Um, it would really help. You. And I would, I would say like Zach, I didn't even consider adding anything. It was two years. I was two years hard focused on just final expense and scaling that up and getting good at that. And I, I didn't even consider adding anything. Well, you don't have to, if you no, master it. Cause right? you can make quarter million dollars plus no problem just by <laughs> mastering one mm-hmm. area. So stop looking for the scratch off vertical <laughs> winning, winning scratch off. And focus and and do the work. And I think that leads us to the next one. Yes. Which is a huge one. We talk about it all the time. And that's just simply the importance of consistent action. Importance of action. But I want to put a word in there, consistent action, because sometimes we have interrupted action and we still wonder why that's not working. I take action for three days a week and then I took next week off and then I come back and get at it again. I work really hard for four days. Yep. What, what, when I say take an action, Zach, what does that mean to you? And how did you apply that in your business in your first 90 days? Well, identifying what are the um, the um, revenue generating activities, mm-hmm. and because there's there is true action that are revenue generating that will advance you, that will help you build confidence, that will help you build self esteem, belief, income, all of those things, and then there's action that actually works against you, such as studying your manuals and your agent guides way too much without being in the field during prime time, during prime time, showing up to every training and coaching call, but still have never been in the field to see clients, um, spending more time organizing your stuff, your desk, 
organizing your leads, building programs, building your own CRM, building your own lead system. Getting your office set up perfectly. Versus actually <laughs> dialing and calling your leads. Mm-hmm. Um, like those, those, those activity ratios are, are way off. Um, but ac- consistent action, uh, when I hear that, there are so many people in, through the last 10 years of me being in the business that I have seen just excellent insurance agents. They were able to help a lot of families sell a lot of premium uh, in spurts, right? So it would they would have a monster month and then you wouldn't hear from them for two or three months. Or they, they could pop off and have a major week, right? But then they would live off those commissions and it died down and got desperate. And then they take off again, right? And, and they, they keep doing that. It's sporadic. And you would see these people and, um, and you, you guys that are listening, there's probably people in your agencies, your IMOs right now that, that their names come to mind and you assume they're the, the best and the top dog and they're just really good at what they do. But the consistent action is what sets it apart. When you look at the year in numbers and you have just Joe over here who just did, you know, four or 5,000 a week, every single week, but didn't take time off that, you know, really adjusted his time, got a little bit better each week in the business. He was never number one on the leaderboard, but at the end of, end of the year, he's the most profitable because it's not always about the numbers that you submit and post and get recognized for. It's, it's, it's the amount you keep because that's what you get paid on. That's right. Um, but his numbers are high. He's qualifying for a couple different carrier trips. He's maybe qualifying for your own IMOs trip. He's probably top five or maybe number one in the entire company. Um, he probably has the ability because he's been so consistent to take more time off. He has less pressure. He has more savings. He's more consistent. Um, and he's probably growing and building his business in other ways because now it's duplicatable. Now it's confident. It's dependable. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's one of those agents that it's, it's, you know, it's, it's consistent is, is the sun coming up in the morning. Yeah. Um, and that is a result of consistent action. I always tell people, um, Hey, what is your goal? Well, my goal is to make a lot of money. Do you want to make a lot of money every week? Right. Every other day. Like how, how, if you want your income to be consistent, your activity has to be consistent. Correct. A lot of people, you know, when you're saying that, like people are coming to my mind, you know, I, yeah. uh, so one of the persons that popped into my mind, when you talk about consistency of action over time, who, who started off very, you know, at a very low level, but continued to stay consistent and is now growing a very profitable insurance business is someone we've had on the podcast, Sid James. Mm-hmm. Sid started out working for an agency, basically leads being provided for him and, and working those leads, doing a lot of door knocks and stayed consistent with his activity, continued to grow it. And now he's building his agency with other agents. He's had consistency of activity. He's now a, in the quarter million dollar club, you know, as far as earnings goes. And he's 20, 23, 25 years old. I uh, forget how old he is. We probably referenced that. 23. Uh, Adam's given me 23. Adam remembers. And But the consistency of his action has led to his results. And now people look at him and say, oh, Sid's, Sid's a massive success. Mm-hmm. But he was just quietly being consistent, man, quietly being consistent and is now building a very profitable, very successful uh, yeah. agency. And with renewals and has got mul- he's got multiple verticals, but he got good at one and, and th- took consistent action. That's the point. Like, he, he's, he's now been in the industry for a few years, I mean, maybe three, I think. Yeah. Um, but he he's mastered one and then started to master other ones. And year three in, he's, he's, he's now opened an office. He's now, uh, which is really cool, by the way, the branding of it's awesome, mm-hmm. which is offering confidently offering all these other verticals and being successful in theirs. He wasn't doing that in three weeks. No. And, no. and that's the difference is no. the people that stay a lot of times and just being honest, like there's a lot of people in this industry that I have met, uh, it, that, in my opinion, they don't strike me as the number one best salesperson I've ever met. And I'm not saying they're not good people. They are. They're all great people. They're amazing. And that's actually what makes the difference. But as far as skill set or, or natural talent or ability or had a former career in sales, um, but the difference is they stayed with it for a number of years and their income and renewal base 
is just head scratching. Yes. It is. And you're like, wow, like mm-hmm. really? Like, and that's such a really cool, encouraging thing. But the, yeah. the thing that makes the people that have had the longest agencies successful is they never quit. They never derailed and went to another possible way. They just stayed through the grind. When it got tough, they pushed through, they tried to learn, they leaned in, they found right communities, they pushed forward and just the element of time Mm -hmm. and not quitting, even if they struggled for four or five years, they've all had a breakthrough and it's, it's really cool to see. That consistent action over time leads to massive results. It's the only thing that ever has. You don't even have to be that good. It's the only thing that ever has. (laughs) And we say over time, like time can be compressed. We talk about, you know, going to college for four years and spending a hundred grand minimum now to get a college degree, to get out to apply for a job at 40 to $60,000 a year after you do all that. And you can come in here and within the first 12 months, 18 Mm -hmm. months, be tracking well over six figures, pushing towards, you know, quarter million if you stay consistent. Yep. They're like the track records are there and sometimes boring, consistent action is the thing that you need to do the most. And so uh, in your first 90 days, you need to get used to that and stop starting and stopping and stop starting and start start stopping, you know, do, stay consistent. Just commit. Yeah. Last one, and we'll wrap on this one, uh, which I think is probably the biggest thing that you need to do as a new agent and focus on in the first 90 days is prospecting. Prospecting. How many people are you talking to? You, you already alluded to it, revenue generating activities, focusing on seeing people. You said you did it. You only had 13 or 15 leads or something, but you said you talked to so many people. You should have wrote 15, but you only wrote 56. Prospecting. You were you had one type of lead then. Now agents got all kinds of options when it comes to prospecting. And I still don't think they understand all the options they do have. Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at a direct mail lead, yeah, you may have a number. You may have 15, 20. You may have 30. You know, But there's going to be a portion of those that have couples on the card. So there's double opportunities there. There's going to be people that live in the home, um, could be grandkids, could be a brother, could be a sister, could be a grandparent. Um, they have neighbors daughter, that live next door son, to them, yeah. daughter, son. Mm-hmm. Opportunity is absolutely everywhere. There's churches and communities. Mm-hmm. There's um, there's different nursing and, and uh, nursing home facilities, special living facilities that you could easily do um, – little client appreciation breakfasts, assisted living assisted facilities living. you're talking about. Yeah. You can do educational, um, you know, uh, not a webinar, but like a, like a meeting seminar seminar. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, you could post on social media. You can start creating reels to generate, um, leads and activity, mm-hmm. educational based stuff. You can create a YouTube channel. You can create a podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could go door knock businesses. You can pull out a phone book and call businesses. You can go find uh, a, um, a neighborhood or a trailer park or you could – any community and just go introduce yourself, shake their hands, get to know them. And, and like opportunity is absolutely everywhere. But the main thing I want everybody to focus on is the prospecting. We get paid one way, one way. It's as a result of putting a client in a better position – and protecting their loved ones with a life insurance plan, okay? For people that need it, for people that want it, for people to understand the value of it. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to say that. So where should our focus be on? This entire call, the first 90 days, all we need to do is how do we get better at seeing people? How do we get better at learning how to provide the service for people? Mm -hmm. And how do we get better at sitting in front of more people? Yeah, I don't care how you do it. Um, and one of the books you have here, Roger, is how I raised myself from failure to success in selling. That title, of that book is probably the a question that a lot of you guys are asking right now. And to save you time in reading that book, which you should read it, but the whole book could be summed up in one sentence and is nothing more than see the people with enthusiasm. That's it. Be happy, be smile, be a bright person in their day, see the people, get in front of them. And he says in there, you can't, you can't not make good if you sit with four to five families every single day and tell them what you do and, um, tell your story and tell your story. It's, it's incredible. Mr. Walter Lamar (laughs) Talbot was the owner of the insurance company. And Frank Betcher was a, a failing insurance agent. 
trying to quit, and he got stuck in a bullpen meeting as he was trying to clean out his desk. Yep. And uh, Walter Lamar Talbot said that, that there's any person who will commit to telling their story four to five times a day can't help them making good in this business. Yep. I, I read this book in my first 90 days, believe it or not. And he said, <laughs> he said, I may not be able to focus on how much money I'm making. I can I may not be able to d- determine the results, but I can focus on telling my story to four or five people every day. Yep. I can do that. And so prospecting is the key. So how are you prospecting? There's all kinds of ways to do it. There's automations, there's direct mail leads, there's, you know, there's, there's all kinds of ways that you can do that, but you have to make that your number one priority. How do you stay in front of people um, and talk to people? How do you get through the first 90 seconds on a phone call? You know, like how, mastering that craft of, of getting there. So um, guys, in summary, uh, I want to let you know that it's going to be a challenging start. Yep. <laughs> it's going to be difficult. Uh, it will be to, worth it. You've got to differentiate between simple and easy and will be willing to put in the work. And like Zach said, focus on learning and focus on the work and the results will come. Don't focus on the results. Secondly, there's going to be information overload uh, and it's going to seem overwhelming. You have to dial in where you're focused on and, and narrow it down to this third one, which was finding a niche and staying consistent on that. And, and one thing that I wrote down here is you've got to focus on one area and give it the attention it deserves to develop a winning process for you. And you cannot do that in a day. You cannot do that in a week. You have to give it time. You have to develop. You have to get the lap time in on the track, driving the car so you know how it feels, how it handles in the corner. You've got to put the time in into one area. Uh, the importance of action, consistent action, is going to be the make or break. And then lastly, always stay prospecting because that's going to keep you in, um, you know, this area of revenue generating activity. Absolutely. And if you guys need any help, uh, you need any advice, that's what we're here for. Uh, Life Insurance Academy, we're founded on serving the industry, serving you guys, serving everybody that we can. We try to do that in every way we can from having Uh, boot camps to literally give you the recipe to follow the principal sales system. We have scripts, we have flip charts, we have live coaching calls every single Thursday that you guys can tune into and actually ask questions, talk about your sits, um, what programs you're having. We have a full training library on different courses of different types of insurance uh, methodologies to selling them, Um, ways to handle objections, anything and everything you need. That's what we're here for. Um, You guys are, um, you're existent to be difference makers and we're here to help in any way we can. Uh, Thanks for tuning into this podcast. Let us know if we can help in any, any way and please reach out and check us out on our next one.